How do programming languages work in cryptocurrencies? Hey and welcome to today's video. My name is Julian. On my channel, it's all about making you crypto fit. That means understanding cryptocurrencies, decentralization, blockchain, but also entrepreneurship and mindset. And today I want to dig a bit deeper, but I'm still going to keep it very, very simple at the end. That's what it's all about on this channel in explaining to you how programming languages actually work with cryptocurrencies. Because this stuff might actually confuse you. You might have heard that Bitcoin, for example, has script as a programming language, but then you hear that Bitcoin was, or Satoshi used C++ at the beginning, and now we have Python and we have JavaScript. How does this all work together? Or how does this work in Ethereum where we have Solidity and, and then we have actually this uh, Ethereum virtual machine, uh, machine code, if you want to call it. How do all these things work together and what do we need to do what? And so what I want to do is I have my writing pad here and I want to kind of explain this in very, very, very simple terms. So let's go in there and have a kind of look. So if we talk about all these kind of different cryptocurrencies, all we have always is we have so-called rules. And these rules are nothing else than the protocol. And so for example, one of those rules could be if I add three plus two, that this equals five, right? So this would be one. And so I would have all these different kind of rules and all these rules together kind of get compounded in the very, very basic programming language in Bitcoin. This is for example, script. And script is super, super basic. They are called opcodes. And Bitcoin has less than 100 of those. And you can look them up, I'll link it down below, but you can look those up. And so it's really, really, really basic. Now, if we then go and say, okay, let's think of Ethereum. Ethereum in this case, it has the Ethereum virtual machine code that basically compiles, and let's discuss what this actually means. So it has this Ethereum virtual machine code, and this kind of gets compiled down by Solidity. But so now it gets very interesting. How, where is the script coming from? Where's the solidity coming from? What does this actually mean? And now let's quickly kind of do, and this is really, really basic computer science. Um, and again, I'm really kind of simplifying that a bit. But so if we think of all of that, then what we actually would have is we have machine code. And these are all the possibilities we have with machine code. And machine code is very, very, very basic. Um, and all these other codes, right? Uh, all these other, uh, other languages, um, let's say Python, C++, uh, and so on. Let's, uh, it, it, there's endless. What they basically do is they compile down to these codes. So instead, uh, to machine code. So instead of going and you having to type as a programmer all these weird machine code like instructions, you can type way easier and you can use almost natural language processing. We're not there yet, um, but like Python is very easy to be, to be read and so on. And so it kind of comp uses all of those. But so now is the thing. In Bitcoin, for example, we only have those 100 upcodes. So we're talking about, and let's write this in red, a very small part of the entire thing. And let's call this basically script, right? And this is not entirely correct. I, I just kind of want to use this as an example. And now, when we look at Ethereum, Ethereum is larger, has way more possibilities, right? So this is the Ethereum virtual machine code. Now it gets very interesting. It's very, very difficult for these languages like Python to go and say, we have all these possibilities, like a lot, but we now only want to limit ourselves to script, to those few opcodes that script has. This is actually very difficult. In coding, there's, it's actually, so it's quite easy to do everything. And it's quite easy to limit to one thing only. But it's very, very, very difficult, difficult to allow a lot of things, but exclude a lot as well. It's very, very difficult because you would, to compile down, it's just really, really difficult because there's so many exceptions, so many dependencies, it's really, really, really difficult. And now what this means is the following, and this is the interesting conclusion of all this. If you wanna run code in Bitcoin, 
you need to run this entire thing in script. This is how you run it. But if you want to read it and verify it, you can use all these other languages. You can use Python, C++, and on Bitcoin now even JavaScript and so on. And they can all read and verify it. But if you want to talk to all the other nodes, these services, all these nodes, they need to talk in script. That's the only way how you can actually run it, because that's the only way how you can be sure that only this part of the code can get executed and not all the other things. Now, in, uh, in Ethereum, there is actually the way, and this is what made Ethereum quite special here, there is actually this way to compile Solidity down to Ethereum virtual machine code. This actually works. The reason, though, we still use these other programming languages is because we don't have general machines like computers that actually can run as a whole machine as Solidity. And so even in Solidity, what happens is, in Ethereum, what happens is you use Solidity to run it and to execute, but you can use, for example, Python or Rust and so many other languages to read and verify. And so if someone talks about all these different programming languages in coding, um, it doesn't actually matter what your node in the, at the end is running on. Because what then happens is, so let's say this is the blockchain as a, as a node network, right? And all these little dots here are nodes. Now, it doesn't matter what these nodes are all running on because all they actually need to do is they need to read what script is doing and only script can actually execute, but they read it in other languages. So it doesn't matter if this node is running on Python, this one is running on C++, and this one is running on Rust and so on, whatever. So it doesn't matter because they only like read and verify. But the actual execution has to happen in script to make sure that only these opcodes actually get executed and nothing else. And the same happens with Ethereum, just Ethereum has a bit of an advantage that you can actually go a level of abstraction higher by uh, being able to execute uh, Solidity. Let me know if this kind of explains this a bit to you. If uh, you had a bit of a light bulb moment, if you have some questions, let me know down below. I need to give a huge thanks to my buddy Yuzin who sat down with me and simplified that for me um, because I was reading into this a lot and I wanted to understand a lot of these things. Um, now I do understand that a lot of these things are simplified right now. I do this on purpose. Um, he w sat with me for hours and walked this stuff through, but uh, huge thanks for him. And uh, I hope this kind of makes sense for you. Let me know if you have questions in the comments below. Um, if you like this stuff, if you wanna have more of this stuff on this channel, let me know in the comments below, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you at the next video. Yours truly, Julian.